uh, I want to talk about drop thumb. Some people kind of make this into a thing and they are, they, I teach it right from the beginning, right from the very first day somebody comes in um, and we're sitting down face to face or in a Skype lesson, we start with basic stuff which includes a drop thumb. So let me just um, talk about what it is and show you how to do it because it's pretty simple. So first of all, we need to talk about the, the what I call a basic bum ditty. Um, some instructors don't like that term. A lot of them use it. Some of them don't. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, we could we, we could we we'll we'll call it bum ditty. Okay. Let me tell you what's happening there. Your hand is coming down or toward the banjo because it's not just an up and down movement. It's actually out and toward also. So the first thing is your hand comes down and your thumb comes down to rest on the fifth string. The fifth string is the short string. So one, it doesn't matter whether you hit the exact string you want or you kind of strum, either one, make sure your thumb is coming down because we're after the motion, not the accuracy at this point. But it's coming down to rest on the fifth string. So that's the first part of a bum, bum. Now you do exactly the same thing again. And this time you pull out with your thumb to, to pluck that fifth string. Notice that you're not, you're not out here and having to reach for the note. It's already there. It comes to rest on the fifth string at the same time that your finger is, is contacting these other strings. So, if you have, uh, if you have a sort of a basic thing, strum, whatever you want to call it, that's a bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty. That's fine, um, but notice you only have if you count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bum ditty. If you're doing that, there's nothing on the two. It's just an empty space. What if you have something melodic happening on the two and you want to you want to make it sound? At that point, you're going to need one of the things that you're going to have in your arsenal uh, to uh, make the note on that second count of the one, two, three, four, bum and diddy on that first and. So, one of the things you could do would be a hammer on. So a hammer on, you're hitting it with this hand. And then on the two, yeah, you're, you're hammering on a percussive movement coming down and sounding, and then you're finishing your ditty. So it's bum and ditty, one, two, three, four, okay? Or you could go, that's one, two, three, four, right? Ditty, ditty. And then, or you could do a pull off. So that's from a note that's higher to a note that's lower. It's going to be opposite of a hammer-on. Hammer-on is from a, 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 a lower note, and then it goes to a higher note. A pull-off uh, is often used when you're starting with a higher note and you're going to a lower note, like so. One and two and one and two and. Okay, so um, bum and ditty, bum and ditty. So that's one. So you got your hammer-on, you got your your pull-off. You sometimes have another thing called a slide. Okay, one and two, uh, one, two, three, four. I'm used to saying one and two and, but uh, one, two, three, four, where the, the two is not something you're doing with your right hand, you're doing it with this hand. But there is a way to do the two with your right hand and that is a drop thumb. That is to go, for example. So. What all we're doing there is remember that when your hand comes down, your thumb is already contacting the fifth string. And then it comes down again and does this. Or you could go with a drop thumb. It's just like what I just did. Diddy, diddy. Only when the first time your hand comes down, it's coming, your thumb's coming to rest on a different string. Most often the second string, although not, in, not always for, by any means, but and then it pulls out on that string, and then it comes down again and it pulls off the fifth string. So when you do this motion, uh, 
you're you're not reaching for the fifth the, the second string to, any more than you're sort of reaching trying to find the fifth string because at the moment that this hand this finger or whichever of your fingers you're using it doesn't matter I use mine kind of interchangeably but um, what whatever it, it does this comes down and contacts the fifth string is being contacted at the same time as this so instead your thumb comes down and contacts a different string at that time. That wasn't a very good example there. So it's the same motion as this, but it's on a different string other than the fifth string. Now, how will you ever learn to have uh, accuracy with that? Well, practice, practice, practice. What happens is there, your hand learns that from here to here, if it's open this much, that's the first string. There's the second string, third string, fourth string. You notice my hand is opening or closing based on how far apart these strings are. And it's the same principle that is at work with a, with a drop thumb. Your thumb learns how far away it has to be from your finger to hit, like say, the second string. You just have to practice it. But you want to make sure that when you practice it, that you are actually contacting the string with your thumb at the same time that you're hitting, like say, the first string. So it's coming down, pulling off, and then do, do one with the fifth string. So that's a real common pattern. Okay, and you might do just regular bum ditties in between. So you have that little motion of your hand and then down. But I guarantee that if you practice it, it'll be, become smooth as long as you, you, you don't go like this and then have to find it and, and then have to find the note. You want to come down at the same time that your finger is, is contacting the first string, your thumb is contacting say the second string okay so that drop thumb becomes super useful and since the motion is so similar to this it's really a good idea to just if you in my opinion to just start with it and uh, and um, it's gonna make it easier as you go along for one thing you have to do less shenanigans with your left hand to get the note you're looking for sometimes um, making life simpler for your left hand. Um, I personally feel like I, I uh, my friend Yorma Kakanen told me, I forget who he said, said this. My husband's not here to remind me who it was, so forget it. But what he said was, you know, with, with regards to stringed instruments, he said, your left hand is what you know. Your right hand is who you are. And uh, I, really feel like right hand is very important. It's the percussion and it's the drive, it's the rhythm, it's all that stuff. Um, the melody is nice, but I don't think it's really a banjo unless it's got your right hand going on. So anyway, that's my thoughts about drop thumb. You can practice drop thumb anytime, even without annoying you know, annoying your housemates or anything. Uh, don't if you're watching my videos, don't get don't get my um, my thumb tends to just do this, and sometimes it looks like I'm doing a drop thumb where I'm not actually. So you'll have to keep that in mind. But um, good luck with your drop thumbs. Oh. If you feel like this is helpful and you're using my videos a lot and you feel like con uh, like sending me a contribution um, on PayPal, uh, it's contradance at gmail.com. It just helps me keep all these things without pesky ads and stuff on them. So, all right. Thank you.